All right, guys, in this video, we're gonna be putting a stiffer spring in our wastegate, and I'm also going to address the elephant in the room, my seat belts. Hey guys, welcome back to Bad Luck Garage. We got our new uh, 8.7 pound wastegate spring in the mail. So we're gonna go put this thing in. Should give us between eight and a half, nine pounds of boost. So about, you know, two more pounds of boost than we did have. We're just kind of creeping up. But I'm gonna go put this thing in and hopefully we can swing by and get John and do a little tuning. You don't really have to take that off. It just makes it kind of easy to, uh, or makes it a little easier to hold the cap down when you're trying to tighten this thing up, especially with a stiffer spring. Now what we're gonna do, okay. We are gonna leave two bolts opposite of each other. Uh-oh. Wow. Okay, looks like the heat has really seized these bolts or something. I have to break them loose, but uh, what I like to do is leave like the two easiest accessible ones that are directly across from each other. Leave those for last. I mean, go ahead and break them loose, but we're gonna take all the harder ones to get to out first. Those will be the last two out and the first two back in. I should just title this video, uh, <laughs> Wastegate Spring Replacement. Anyway, it's, it's really important that you leave two in here that are directly opposing each other so you don't, you know, like bend the cap bend the cap on the wastegate or pinch anything or something like that because you know especially if you've got like a really high boost spring in there like you know we're just dealing with seven and you know nine and and eventually we've got a, a 12 pound spring coming but you know you get something in here like a 20 pound spring or something and it's at that point, you're probably gonna have to take the wastegate completely off the vehicle to put that in because you're gonna wanna use a clamp with something, you know, something like a 20. I mean, you're not, most people, unless you're Arnold Schwarzenegger, you're, you're not gonna be able to work at an awkward angle like this and take out a 20 pound spring. It's just not gonna happen. Like to be honest with uh, no. with certain issues that I've got going on, I might have trouble with the 12 pound spring when we get to it. This should be it close to it. There it is. Just let it come straight up. All right. There's our green seven pound spring and we're going to be replacing that with our blue uh, 8.7 pound spring which should be almost nine pounds. Yeah kind of see the difference here. Set him in there. And there's little grooves in there. There's a little groove in there for the spring to seat in, so. You wanna to try to get this lined up so you don't have to twist anything once you get it down. I said try to get it lined up because they're not always easy to get lined up. The 
real trick is this I'm trying to get these two started at the same time once you get two run in pretty good you're fairly safe but you want to make sure you've got a lot of threads in them and the stiffer of a spring you put in the more important that becomes because if you don't get enough threads in them it can pop up and pretty much just rip the threads out of the uh, you know the two holes that you the two uh, screw holes you were using Now, my suggestion is don't try to tighten it down with those two. Once you get those two just kind of holding it, then go ahead and put the rest of them in just to the point of where they're just about to start to snug. And then go around and just take turns snugging them. Uh, kind of like you would, kind of like you would a, uh, wheel on a car you know you, you're gonna like do this one then snug the one across from it then snug this one then snug the one across from it you just follow like a almost like a star pattern guys that's it that's our uh, nine pound spring in there all right guys there might be a slight change of plans uh when john was over here the other day we were trying to figure out where the power steering fluid was coming from because even after i capped off that you know that line in the last video um you know the puddle underneath the truck just kept getting bigger well while i while he was under there and i was inside working the steering wheel uh he found something else so if any of you guys happen to have a c10 you may know that they are notorious for the frame flexing when you steer well the previous owner had actually put this piece of angle up front here to kind of tie the front frame rails together but uh i noticed when we were driving it the other day i had like a real bad creak every time i would turn the steering wheel well here's the deal the original brace back here for some reason it has shed the stock um what do you call it the stock rivet that holds it in place and someone has put a nut and bolt on here what they did not put on here was a lock washer so this has worked loose um the bolt that was in this side where they had made this extra brace has worked loose and fell out so what's happening is when i turn the wheel this whole frame is moving so what I've got to do is try to find some nuts, bolts, and lock washers to tie all this back together. And I've already talked to John, and we're probably going to make a tubular brace to go up here to stiffen it up even more. And then we're probably going to make a tubular brace to go in the back and also act as a uh, safety loop for the drive shaft. So I'm going to see if I can find some hardware because obviously we don't want to drive it like this. The steering's real sketchy, guys. So uh yeah look around and see what i got all right guys i found some stainless steel hardware for the uh you know the little homemade piece of angle that someone had put in there but this is what happened when i tried to tighten up the other bolt that was actually part of the main uh cross brace it just snapped right in half and you can see this is not a grade eight bolt what i ended up doing was i found these bolts which were actually the bolts that I originally had holding my turbo onto the uh, hot side. Well, these are not grade eight either, and they're also too long, and I'm afraid if I turn the steering wheel too far one way, the idler arm is gonna hit it and shear it off. But what I'm gonna do, I think, is I'm just gonna go ahead and go to Lowe's and get some grade eight, uh, grade eight hardware, because, I mean, this, you know, this is part of the frame structural integrity, guys. Originally, it was riveted, and I just looked, and the second bolt on the driver's side, or the second rivet, like the top rivet on that cross brace, has actually also been replaced. So I'm not sure what somebody was doing there, why they would have sheared those off. It's not like that on the passenger side, so it's not like they had completely taken that brace off and put a new, uh, put a new one on, but that makes me really nervous 
and so I think I'm going to go to Lowe's now and get some grade 8 hardware to replace all that with that being said uh, you can see the raindrops I don't know if you can see that or not but it is now starting to rain again so that kind of sucks guys <laughs> you know we just got over eight days straight of rain and oh we just got over eight days straight of rain that kept me from getting anything done and now we're going into more rain so obviously you know we just got our new wastegate spring in i'm not going to be able to get this thing tuned in uh if the roads are wet yeah i mean you know even with the big ass drag radials well especially with the big ass drag radials on the back uh, this thing is not fun to drive in the rain as you saw in my video with my daughter but since this video is gonna get cut short because of the weather um i actually have something to discuss about that video with my daughter that apparently was on a lot of people's minds so what i wanted to talk about was all the drama over my daughter and the seat belts now i tried to address this in the comment section because you know uh I, I really do appreciate guys i mean you know you guys looking out for me looking out for my daughter i mean i really do appreciate that uh but i think sometimes uh in the comments it comes across when when i respond to stuff it comes across as sarcasm well i wasn't being sarcastic guys she's got on a lap belt if you look in certain parts of the video you can actually see where the shoulder harnesses from the uh, racing harnesses come down and connect you can see it on her right hand side right down by her waist so you can tell she's wearing the lap belt now the fact of the matter is this truck only came with lap belts and actually when i got it it had nothing in it at all okay now i went to the junkyard months ago and i did buy a set of uh three point harnesses out of you know a c10 that was equipped with them the problem is when i got them home uh the retractors weren't working correctly so like they would lock and it just randomly so i couldn't use those seat belts i actually have them in well i just threw them in a crate over here for now uh but the reason for the racing harnesses in the first place was more of a expense thing than anything else uh you know those racing harnesses were like 35 bucks on ebay and my whole plan was just attach the lap belt portion correctly to the factory mounting points and don't even worry about the shoulder straps the shoulder straps are there just kind of for looks that's why you can see even in the videos where i'm at the drag strip even though the shoulder straps are draped across me they're not tightened up and the reason they're not tightened up is because they're being held with a sheet metal screw, guys. I mean, those shoulder straps are doing nothing, okay? They were just a temporary fix until I could afford to get a full set of, you know, like three-point harnesses. Uh, you can even see in the videos, I've actually already drilled a hole in the body or in the interior panels uh, up where the mounts are because the interior panels that I originally got with the truck uh, while the mounts for the optional, and yes, in 74, the three-point harnesses was an option, guys. It didn't come in every truck, but the mounts are in every truck. But my interior panels didn't have the hole there. So I've already, you can even see in older videos, I've already drilled the holes, you know. Working on the seatbelt thing, it just hadn't happened yet. But I just kind of wanted to let you guys know what was going on with that and why it looks like we're not wearing seatbelts. And I'll be honest, John and I usually aren't um with john it's a matter of you know they don't fit um uh, with me you know i wear my seat belts in my daily driver all the time but for some reason when i get in this truck i just forget sometimes but uh my wife my kids uh, they've always got the seat belt on even if it's just a lap belt they've always got it on when they're riding in a vehicle with me guys so please don't worry about that um the seat belts that i'm wanting to order are right at 200 dollars don't have the cash for it at the moment but i i think since you know you guys have made it clear that that should be a priority and it should uh you know the safety of my my passengers is always a priority uh i'm gonna go ahead and, and probably try to save up and order a new set of seat belts uh that actually function now the reason the shoulder harnesses aren't hooked up properly for the racing harnesses guys you got to realize this truck is something that has been just a scatterbrain of ideas. Like my ultimate plan for this truck has changed 15 million times. And the seat belts are the same way. 
when I first got the racing harnesses, it was just because it was cheaper to buy the racing harnesses than it was to buy a set of factory retractable seat belts. But then you come to the realization that in order for a racing harness to be safe with the shoulder part, um, you have to have a roll bar behind the seat to mount them. If you just mount those shoulder harnesses all the way down and to the floorboard behind the seat, then what's gonna happen in an accident is if you shoot forward, that seat belt is gonna pull down and it's gonna crush your spine. Uh, somebody actually pointed that out in a video well, it's been several months ago, but yeah, I already knew that, but, and I made the comment to him, which again, probably came across as sarcasm, but it wasn't, that the harnesses were just mounted with a sheet metal screw behind the seat. It was just there to keep the tech guys at the track off my back. Uh, but the lap belt parts are mounted to the factory lap belt location. So technically the truck is legal for street use uh, because it didn't come with anything but lap belts from the factory it doesn't legally have to have anything but lap belts in it now. But that's why my daughter's not wearing the shoulder part of the racing harness because, you know, even, even if I had it mounted straight to the floor, it would be more dangerous in a wreck for her to have that on uh, than it would be for her to just wear the lap belt, which is what she's wearing. I hope that clears some stuff up, guys. And, and like I said, I'm not trying to be sarcastic in the comments. I know uh, some of you guys got kind of irritated with my replies when you said something about the seat belt but um, it's just because I get frustrated because I'm, I explain this over and over I've never explained it as in depth as I am right now but you know I've made the comment about the seat belts over and over again my kids are wearing the lap belt which by the way on those racing harnesses is a real pain in the butt to tighten up on them because my seat does not tilt forward and any of you guys who run racing harnesses know that when you've constantly got different sized people getting in and out, you have to go behind the seat to adjust those harnesses to fit extremely different sized people. So every time one of my kids gets in there, you know, I've got a kid that's 22, which ain't a kid anymore, but I've got a kid that's 22 and I've got a kid that's 12. So every time they get in, I have to like worm behind the seat and try to get those, you know, those things snugged up correctly. So it is a pain in the butt, but we do do it. <laughs> to make sure that they've at least got that lap belt on. But in the future, this thing will get three-point straps. The racing harnesses are going to be taken out, and we're probably going to save them for a track-only project down the road. Anyway, I hope that cleared that up for some of you guys. Um, now, since we're still on the subject of safety, obviously, uh, I have to go to Lowe's and get some grade 8 hardware. Also, I have an actual sponsored video that I have to work on tonight, <sighs> whether it stops raining or not. But uh, you guys will see that Tuesday. They're wanting me to release it Tuesday, I believe. So uh, that'll be coming out. Some of you guys might be interested in it. Some of you may not, but got our higher boost spring in. We've got an even higher boost spring coming. Uh, sometime this week, there will be a tuning video uh, where we're tuning this in on these higher boost levels. So I'm sorry this video got cut kind of short, but at least I got to address the, you know, the seat belt issue. And again, for like the third or fourth time, I really do appreciate, I mean, it's great to know that you guys are looking out for me and looking out for my kids and our safety. I really do appreciate it. My comments in the section, uh, in the comment sections are not meant as sarcasm. When you guys point out a safety issue, uh, I really do take that to heart. Okay, so, you know, keep that in mind when you're reading my comments because I, I know they come across as sarcastic sometimes, but uh, when it comes to safety, you know, I, they're not sarcastic in, in any way, shape, or form, guys, okay? So anyway, if you like this video, which there's really not a whole lot to like about it, I realize, but if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're a subscriber, thank you guys. If you're one of these guys that's been making comments about the seatbelts, thank you. And I will see you next time here on Bad Luck Garage.